Hello everyone, welcome to our craft activity session. We really hope you're going to enjoy what we've got planned to do today. Two different activities and um, what we've, we'll do with the video is we'll split it into chunks so that you can do a bit when, when you want to. You might not want to sit for a long time and do the whole thing together so we've made it as easy as we can for you to do um, bits when you feel like it. Okay, so first of all I'm going to show you what we're going to be making. One of the activities is this pretty little dream catcher um, and it's got some nice chimes on it as well. Okay, so it makes a nice little tinkling sound. So that's the first of our activities. And then we're going to we're going to make some cards. Now we've just had Valentine's Day, haven't we? And we thought it would be really fun to um, see what we can do with some heart shapes. Okay, so we're going to make a pretty pattern with some lovely coloured heart shaped paper. We're going to make this jolly looking caterpillar, also made all with heart shapes, and. The third one we're going to do is we're going to make this flatfish, which is also quite jolly, isn't it? Okay, so everything you'll need will be in, in the packs. There's a pack for the dream catcher, and then there's a pack with all the things you'll need to do your cards and your pictures. Okay, um, you will need a pair of scissors though, um, just a thought because when we come to do the dream catcher, we will need to snip off a, um, a couple of bits of thread when we've tied them on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to swap the camera over. So rather than seeing too much of me, you'll be able to see a bit better what's, what's going on on the workbench and you'll be able to see clearly what, what you need to do. Okay, right, um, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, let's get on with these pictures then, shall we? I'm going to start with the jolly looking caterpillar. Okay, so I've got that one there so that you can see it. Now, let's get everything out of the bag, first of all, and see what we've got. Put all these bits and pieces out. bag out of the way. So we have got a glue stick, that's really important because we're going to be doing quite a lot of sticking. I hope you like sticking. Um, and we've got a black felt pen that we will probably need to use later on. Okay, so we've got three little plastic bags with the, all the different heart shapes in them. So we've got one for our fish, one for our caterpillar and one for our heart design. I've also put in for you a picture sheet that shows you all, all the three designs so you can see a bit more closely um, what what we've done. Let's pop that there for a minute. Um, we've got three cards. Now I was just going to do pictures with you first of all and then I thought well do you know it would be a bit more special if we actually make them into cards. So we've got three cards, three envelopes to go with it um, I expect you can see there's a paper clip on the corner of that one, but I'll explain about that in a minute. And, and I've, um, I've put in a stamp for you. I thought it would be rather lovely if, um, if you sent a card to a special person. There are lots of people we can't see at the moment, aren't there? And it is lovely to send something in the post um, to someone special. So, yeah, so hopefully um, when you've made your cards you'll be able to send one to someone and you might want to send all of them to somebody or you might want to keep some for birthday cards or you know you can decide can't you so i'm going to put these things to one side for now i think i'm uh, yes i'm going to start with the caterpillar because i've got him there ready so i'll put the other things over here um, and i've got my card ready now why i've got the paper clip on here is um, the top was a bit springy when I was um, putting the pieces on um, before I'd stuck them down. So I thought, well, let's pop a little paper clip on there and then we've got a nice firm surface to work on. OK, so 
let's get on and get these caterpillar hearts out. You might say um, caterpillars don't have legs. Now, because um, I've put legs on my caterpillar, and actually you're probably right, because I don't think caterpillars do really have legs, do they? Um, so this is, I, I guess it's a bit of a sort of cartoony caterpillar, isn't it? But um, do you know what? If you don't want to put legs on your picture, you really don't have to. Right, let's get these, fid there are some fiddly little bits in here, but that's fine. Let's get them laid out and the two, two wobbly eyes. So we have got an, a bigger orange heart, which is for the, the head. We've got one, two, three blue hearts, medium size, and we've got three medium size greens. Then we've got two little pink tiddly ones, which go on here on the antenna, I think they are, aren't they? And then we've got our two wobbly eyes, okay? Um, so I'm going to, to lay my pieces on first before I start sticking. I quite like to do that to make sure I've got everything in the right place. Um, now, I'm going to start obviously with the orange for the head. You can put it higher up, you can put it lower down, you can have a little play around. Now, as you can see, I've done green, blue, green, blue, green, blue with my the hearts for the body. But if you've got a different idea, then you know you can you can do make up your own version. Actually, this time I think I'm going to do blue green, blue green, blue green. But you can do blue blue blue, green green green. It's entirely up to you. Um, and actually, this time I'm going to rather than doing it in such a straight line on the as I have on the other one. I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Yeah, I quite like that. Yeah, so let's get sticking, shall we? So I've got my glue stick here. And I'm going to start with a head. So I'm going to move, I'm going to move them across a little bit. So I'm going to stick a bit of glue on the back. I don't think they'll need a huge amount of glue. And there we are, that's that head stuck on. Then We'll go with a, a blue heart. Yeah, I think that's about right. And then I'll go with a green one. So again, not too much glue. They, they're sticking, they stick quite nicely. And then I'm going to go up a bit with this blue one. And then up a bit higher with that green one. So it sort of looks as if he's wriggling his way along, doesn't it? And my last green one, actually it doesn't matter which side you put the glue on because they're exactly the same both sides. So there we are. Yeah, you can tweak them around a bit if you want. But So that's the head and the body stuck on. Um, and then I think... I think I'll do the eyes next. I think it's quite nice to get the eyes on. And these are sticky, they're already sticky, but what we've got to do, we just need to, it is a bit fiddly, but I'm sure you'll be fine. We just need to flick the edge of the, there's a, a little circle of paper on the back. So we just need to flick that off and um, just decide where, where you want to put the eyes. So I'm gonna go there. And I'll probably put the other one about there. You can put them closer together. You can put them further apart if you want to. You can make up your, make your own choice on that. Right, there we are. So that's the two eyes. Um, and then I'm going to draw in, I'm going to place my little pink hearts on for the antenna. I mean, you can put them close, you can put them further away, close together. You can decide they only need a tiny little dab of glue. So I'm gonna stick those on now. So I'm gonna, yeah, just dab it on there a little bit like that, which should be fine. Stick that one on, little dab on there. Lovely. And then pop that on there because we finished with our glue stick for a minute. Now, when I start doing the detail, I usually do it in pencil first, just in case I make a mistake. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw the lines for the antenna. I'm going to do them a, I'm going to do them a bit bendy on this one, and they're a little bit longer. Um, and I'm going to give my caterpillar a, a mouth, and I think he should have a smiley mouth. So I'm going to do a smiley mouth on here. Now, if you think your caterpillar is not feeling so happy, then obviously you can decide what shape mouth you want to do. I hope yours is happy, but you know, that's for you to decide, isn't it? And then with my felt pen, because I'm happy with what I've done, I'm going to just go over there and then I'm going to go over the, the mouth with the black felt pen. Lovely. And that just makes it stand out a bit better, doesn't it? Now, once again, you can decide whether or not you want to do legs on yours. I think I am going to do legs on mine. So I'm going to just in pencil, first of all, just like little capital L shapes, really. But again, you can you can do them. You can do them in your own way, can't you? OK. And we'll go over. And then the pen. And there he is wriggling his way along. You can do more if you want to. Again, it's entirely up to you. Um, and I, I did think it would probably be quite nice if you like drawing and colouring, you might want to do a bit of detail around. You could do some flowers, you could do some grass maybe some trees in the background, but I'm going to leave mine plain and I shall leave that for you to decide if you want to do a bit more detail, then you can. So that is our Jolly Caterpillar finished. OK, we'll get on with our fish picture now then, shall we? So I've got my next card ready and I'm just going to pop the paper clip on the corner to stop it being springy so that I can lay my pieces out nicely. We've got the fish picture there that I did earlier and here's the little bag, plastic bag with the heart shapes in. So let's get these out. So we have got some little tiddly hearts again so just be careful with those and of course those wobbly eyes so first of all I'm going to put down the big pink heart so we've got one big pink heart then we've got a medium sized orange and a medium sized yellow and we've got one two three four five five little tiddly ones our two wobbly eyes and we've got a half a heart. We've got an orange half a heart, which is what we use to make the fin. OK, so uh, first of all, then I'm going to put my big pink heart, which is the, the body and the pointy end goes. Well, you could put it. You could, actually you can do it whichever way around you like. But the, the pointed end of the heart is the head end. Um, and obviously this rounded end is for the tail. I'm going to do this one exactly the same way as I uh, have done the one here. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and stick this one on because I think I've got it in the place where I want it. So let's get this body stuck on. Not too close because I need to leave room for the tail. There we are. So that's that stuck on. I'll just check. Oh yes, I've got plenty of room for my tail and I'm just going to lay the head on. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you could swap over. There's no reason why you have to have them that way around. You could do a yellow tail and an orange head if you want to. So I'm going to get those stuck on then. If I'm going too quickly with the sticking, remember you can just stop the video, can't you? And then you can catch up in a minute, OK, because I might be going a bit quickly for you. But I'm sure you're doing just fine. Right, so tail is on, head is on. And I think I will put 
the eyes on. Yeah, let's go for the eyes. And again, we've just got that little fiddly thing. Now this, this is a flatfish actually, which I meant to say. Um, and flatfish live on the bottom of the seabed. And that's why the, this flatfish has the two eyes on the same side of its head. So I'm going to put one here and then, yeah, that's fine. I'm going to put the other one. I'm going to have them quite close together on my fish. So again, that fiddly little flick off that paper. And there we are. It's got its eyes on. Now let's do, let's put the, oh, let's put the mouth on, shall we? So I'm going to use the little orange heart for the mouth, get a bit of glue on there. And then we just stick it on there like that. Lovely, lovely. And let's put the fin on. I mean, you can place it where you like. You can put it lower down if you like. I'm just going to pop mine around about there, I think. And again, just a little dab of glue. Doesn't need too much. And stick that on. So there. That's basically our fish done. It's quite uh, quite a quick one, really. And then these little, these little bubbles are, little mini hearts are for the bubbles, they're quite sweet, aren't they? So they can just be going up like that. Again, you can put them where you like. You could put, actually, you could put them in a, a line going that way if you'd rather. You can choose. Again, you have a little fiddle about with them and, and decide where you want them to go. And like I said, with the caterpillar, if you want to do some extra things around the fish, then of course you can. You might want to draw some seaweed, some shells, you might want to draw some other creatures, but I, I'm going to leave that up to you. There we are. That's our last bubble. So there we go. Lovely. Well done. The last one is just a, a straightforward heart design with these lovely coloured hearts. It's really nice paper actually. It's got really pretty designs on. Right, let's get our heart shapes out and see what we've got in here. So we've got one, two, three of the larger ones and then you've got five five of the smaller ones um, and what's really nice about this paper is it's it's got um, it's different each side so you can choose you can just have a look at both sides and decide how you want to organize them those are nice they're purple one side and pinky on the other and the yellow is stripy one side and plain so and they'll all be yours will all be a little bit different um, they might not be exactly the same as what I've got here, but every card that you make will be a completely unique card because there won't be another one anywhere quite like it. So really, this is for you to just decide how you want to arrange your cards, your hearts, I should say. I think however you put them, they just look pretty, don't they? They look really nice. Um, I mean, you don't have to put them all on the front. If you don't want to use them all on the front, you could put some inside, couldn't you? Again, that, that's really for you, you to decide how you want it to look. OK, so I'm just I'm not going to stick these now. I'm going to leave you to to get on with that. So that's really our our card making activity finished. I really hope you've enjoyed making them. I'm sure they look absolutely fab. Um, and it would be lovely to get some pictures. If you could send some pictures to Mr. Coles of the cards you've made, I'd love to see them. That would be really, really nice. Um, and not forgetting then your stamp. So I hope that you'll, you'll send one of your cards to someone special for a birthday maybe, or, or just, just to send them a greeting. Again, that's entirely up to you. So you've got your envelopes there. You've got your pen. Um, if you like writing, then obviously you can write in them yourselves. But if you're not very keen on writing, then I'm sure you've got somebody who will help you to, to do the rest of it. Um, and if you like drawing, you can decorate inside the cards as well. You can do you can do some extra things 
um, with your own ideas, can't you? So there we are, that's, uh, that's the end of, of that activity. Righty-ho, let's get on with making our dream catcher then, shall we? Now, I've put um, the one I, I've already made there for you to, to see. Um, now, please, I, I hope you're not thinking, oh my goodness, that looks really complicated. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. Um, I'm sure you'll be fine. We're going to do everything step by step. Yes, some of the parts are a little bit fiddly and you, you probably will need a bit more help with this one. We're going to be doing some counting. We're going to be doing some threading. We're going to have to tie some knots. So if you're not very good at tying knots yet, then yes, you might need some help with that. Um, and we are going to need a, a pair of scissors this time just to snip off some, some of the bits of gold and silver ribbon that we use here and, and the threads. OK, so we've got we've got the plastic ring, which is the dream catcher part, which we'll do our, our nice star design on. And then we've got the, the things hanging down, which is the two metal chimes, they're metal tubes that make a nice tinkling sound. And then we've got um, another thread, another piece of cord hanging down that's got a thing. I'm not sure what it's called, but I call it the plinker because it it taps at the chimes tap onto it and it makes the lovely tinkling sound and then we've got the the disc hanging on the bottom with the the moon and stars okay now i put a piece of white paper here so i hope you'll be able to see nicely what we're doing but we will go step by step so don't panic right so we'll get our things out of the bag we've got some paperwork in there We've got the plastic ring, which is the main part of the dream catcher. And then we've got some smaller bits and pieces. So we'll just get everything out first of all, and then we'll look at the different things that we have. Let's have a look. So first thing, I've, I've done you a photocopy of the, the actual um, uh, dream catcher part, okay, the, the, the plastic ring, so that you can have a good closer look at how it goes. Um, and what I've also done, which I hope will make it easier for you, I've made um, a diagram to show you how to do this lovely, the, the threading, which probably looks more complicated than it really is um, and it'll all become clear once we start okay but it just makes um, this lovely star shaped design and, and using the gold and the silver we get a gold star and a silver star okay so that's one of the jobs we're going to be doing that will be the first job which will be threading the gold and silver ribbon um, through our plastic ring okay um, and then the other things that we've got here, oh, we have got a lovely pack of stickers, okay? So come the end, I think it's where, when every, all the other jobs have done, then that's the ideal time. You can see I've started to decorate mine, I just put a few stickers on. But you can use these, they've got some hearts and stars in there, so you can decorate at the end um, however you choose. So we'll leave those to one side for now. We've got our two metal tubes which make our chimes a longer one and a shorter one so they give you a slightly different sound and then um, we need something that taps onto the the wind chimes to make them make a noise so that i think i call that the plinker i'm not really sure if that's the right word but that's what i call it and then we need something that we've got like we've got here hanging down on a longer piece of cord which catches the breeze really and and um, helps the helps this to move to to get that nice tinkly sound and then of course we need some pieces of cord so we have got let's do this one first we've got a nice piece of blue and white string 
which is what I used to make the loop to hang up this one that I made. So we've got our string for our loop and then we need the cords to hang the, the metal chimes and the plinker on, okay? So we've got two pieces of thin cord and then we've got this piece which is slightly thicker, thicker. it's a heavier cord. So that's for the one in the middle, okay? And I've already tied a knot on that one, so for you. So that will come to later and these two th um, th thinner pieces will come to. So I'm just going to leave those there for now. And then we'll, um, we'll have a look at those when we've done the first part, okay? So we need to start with our plastic ring. And we need to make sure, first of all, that we've got it the right way up. And so what I've done on the, the diagram I've done for you, I've shown you which needs to be the top and which needs to be the bottom. And I'm sure you'll see it absolutely fine. Um, if we look down, um, we've got big holes going all the way around. There are actually 10 big holes going around the ring. And then at what is the bottom, there are two smaller holes, okay? So we're not going to worry about those two smaller holes to begin with because we'll come to them later on. Uh, what we're going to do first of all is we're going to work with these 10 bigger holes which go all the way around, okay? And what I've tried to show you in the diagram is exactly what we're going to do because we're going to do, we're going to need to do some counting um, and if we count on um, the, the right number of holes, then we will gradually build up what you can see, these nice triangle shapes, which then form into a star, which really looks quite pretty. So, okay, let's get started. I'm going to start with my piece of gold ribbon, okay? And I've got my ring the right way up. I've got the two little holes here at the bottom. So I know that this, this is the top. And you can match it up if you want to on the diagram and make sure you're happy you've got it the right way. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the end of the ribbon, the gold ribbon, through the top hole. We need to pull a fair bit through so that we can tie a knot, basically. So we're going to cross it over and we're going to tuck the end under and then we're going to do that again. So again, we're going to cross over and tuck the end round the back through the hole and we've got a knot because we don't want it to come undone. And there we are, we're ready. We're ready to start. If you can get the, the end, the knot at the back, then that's fine. But if you can't, do you know it when it's up hanging up, it absolutely won't matter. So then now this is where we'll come back to this um, in a few minutes and we'll probably trim the extra off. So don't worry about that now. So what we're going to do next, and this is where we have to start counting, to get our triangle shapes that we'll then make into this star, we need to count to four, or we need to count on four holes, okay? So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and I'm going to get the end of my ribbon and I'm going to tuck the end through that fourth hole. Okay, I'll just check. One, two, three, four. Excellent. And now I'm going to do the same thing again. So remember, we're not going to count those small holes. We're going to say one, two, three, four. And I'm going to tuck in here. And if we can just do it around the inside, of the ring then that works that works best really if you can okay and then we're going to do the same again so we're going to count on four holes one two three four and tuck it through it might get a little bit twisted but that doesn't matter you can soon you can just straighten it out there we are so there we are, there's the start of our shape, okay? So then we're going to do the same again. We're going to say one, two, three, four. And we're going to come across to this hole here, which on the 
diagram here is the on the red which is the first one we started with is hole number five okay it is getting a little bit twisted but that's okay we can we can flick that round and to be honest it doesn't really matter because both sides of the ribbon look nice and then I expect you can already guess where we're going to end up now because you can see our star shape beginning. So I'm going to say one, two, three, four. So I'm going to bring my ribbon and I'm going to tuck the end of it. I'm going to go front to back here because then there now you can see we've got our lovely star shape. OK, that's brilliant, isn't it? And now we're going to tie. So we're going to cross those ends over. And again, if you're not great at tying knots because they can be a bit tricky then ask someone to help you okay and then we're going to do the same again we're going to cross them over tie them in a knot and then I think it's quite nice to get the scissors and just snip off that that extra those extra little ends Right, so then we need to do the same again with the silver ribbon. So then on the diagram, this is where I've shown you on with the green where we start and finish. OK, so we're just basically we're going to move round to the next hole from where we started the gold. So same thing again, pull a bit of an end through, cross them over, push the end through the back. Tighten it up a little bit and then do the same again. Cross over and then tuck that end from the back to the front through that hole. And remember, we leave that on end on there till we have threaded the whole lot through. So then now we're ready to do the same again. So I'm just going to, to pull that through so that we've got the silver on the top now so we can see what we're doing. And same again. So we're going to count four holes, OK? One, two, three, four. Find the end, push it through, and then pull it all the way through. Lovely. Okay. And then we're going to do the same again. So we've got our ribbon there ready, and we're going to count one. Remember, it don't include the little holes for this, just looking at the big ones. So one two three four find the end again and this time we're going to come from behind because that's where the ribbon is pull it through lovely and there we are we're starting to see our shape again if it gets a bit twisted well it is curly ribbon there we are just straighten it out if you can and then yes you're right we're going to count on another four so one two three four basically what we're doing now as i'm sure you've spotted is we're just filling in the empty holes and then one two three four find the end there it is tuck it through that hole pull that end through and then i expect you've realized we end up back where we started with the silver Let's just check. One, two, three, four. There we are. So we're going to push that through. And there, and there it is. There we've got our lovely gold and silver star shape. OK, we've got we've got two stars going on, haven't we? We've got our gold one and our silver. It's really pretty. Lovely. So now we need to tie those ends together. So same as we did before. Cross them over. Pull it up tight and then cross them over again and do that second knot to stop it coming undone and then we'll just get the pair of scissors and we'll just snip those extra ends off so that it's all neat and tidy and there we are there we are we've got our lovely dream catcher ring all done with the lovely gold and silver ribbon you might want to have a little rest for a minute before we do the next bit. Well done. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, right, now we're ready to start tying on the uh, things that hang down. So we want to keep our dream catcher the right way up. Okay, the same way up we had it before. So we, we want to be looking now at the bottom, which is where we've got those two little holes that are still empty. Um, but we, we won't use those straight away. What we're going to do first is look at the one in the middle um, because that's where we're going to hang the plinker and the, the disc with the star, stars and moon. So we want to start with this thicker piece of cord. Remember I said there's one thicker piece and I've already tied a knot on the end of that. So we want the moon and stars and we want the goldy coloured plinker. So we take our disc first, got the cord ready and all we're going to do first of all, we're going to find there's a little hole, there's a small hole at the top of the, the crescent moon and really just push that end through either way really either side I don't think it matters actually which side you use one side is a bit rougher when you feel it one side feels a bit smoother that's just how they were made they were printed all these plastic things actually were printed on a 3d printer and the smooth side is where it sits down on the surface and then the the, the rougher side is the top okay so we've pop the thread through the hole and that knot stops it coming off. It just saved you tying an extra knot really. Um, but now you are going to need to tie a knot because I'll just show you first. What we're going to do next is we're going to thread on this plinker. There's a hole right up through the middle and we push our cord through, but we don't want it to come all the way down here. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to take it off again a minute. We're going to tie a knot um, a little bit higher up, okay? It doesn't matter exactly where. So again, you might need some help here. So what we're going to do, I'm going to make a loop with the cord and sort of cross it over. Then I'm going to take the end round the back, bring it through to the front so it comes through the hole and just tie it up in a little knot. So it just makes a bump really on the cord. Okay, so then now we can pick up the plinker and we can pop the end of the thread up through the hole and there, that's exactly what we want to happen. It stays right there, okay? And then the next thing we need to do is we need to tie this on. So this again is where we're looking at where those two small holes, the empty holes are, but we want to go through this hole here the bottom big hole which is where that silver ribbon is and I'm just going to put the end of that cord through and this is now time to tie another knot okay so we're going to cross it over push the end through and then we're going to do the same thing again cross over make a hole and push the end through and that's that's really all we need to do and then we've got our plinker hanging nicely and we've got the little wind catcher at the bottom. OK, so that's that job done. OK, so the film might have gone a little bit funny then because we just moved the camera just so that I can hold it up and show you a bit more clearly. So we've got our, our plinker and the, the wind catcher on the bottom. We've got that done. Now we're ready to tie these chimes on. So I've got my first chime and one of the thinner bits of cord. So I'm just going to find the hole here and I'm going to pop one end of the cord through the hole. I'm going to put those ends together and just pull it a little bit tight like that um, and find one of the empty holes. It doesn't matter which side you do first at all. But what we do need to do, we need to make sure, because I've given you a, a bit of extra here, we need to sh be sure that we pull this up far enough because we want the chimes to, to bang together nicely against the plinker. All right, so I think the easiest way is I just put one of the ends of the thread through the hole, get the ends together and then just pull it up so that it's, well, I think if you aim for sort of having the plinker about halfway along the chime, that'll be fine. And I'm going to pinch those 
threads together and then that's where I'm going to do my knots like we did before okay pop that end through now before I pull it too tight I'm just going to check and see if I think that's okay yeah hopefully you can see yeah I think that's fine and it makes a nice little tinkly sound doesn't it so happy with that I can tighten up that knot and then I can get my scissors and I can snip that extra bit off because we don't really want those extra bits flapping about do we and then we just do the same with the other chime okay this is the longer one find the hole pop the um, pop the cord through pull it up through so that the ends are together and then we're going to do the same thing again we'll just hold it up and get an idea of where we want it to be there we are I mean you don't have to have the tops of the chimes level you can you can do that how how you like however it comes out but just make sure it's high up enough to hit against the the plinker there so I'm just going to pinch those two together make my knot check it before I tie it off too tight oh yes that's lovely yes I'm happy with that so pull that knot a bit tight so that it doesn't come undone and then like we did before we'll just snip that extra that extra tail off lovely and then we need to put the blue and white string on the top end so that we can hang it up so I've got my piece of string find that hole at the top remember where we started with the gold thread and we're just going to push that string through and time to make another knot okay get your ends together loop it round tie that knot and there we are let's just have a check oh yes that's lovely now we've got one last job to do we've got the job of decorating it if you'd like to of course if you'd like to leave it plain because you like it like that then that's absolutely fine but if you would like to decorate it with these stickers then we can just I'm not going to stick mine on now I'm going to leave you to have a think about that and decide what you want to do but basically you've got some um, sparkly hearts, some colourful hearts, oh there are some sparkly stars in here so just a nice mixture of of stickers if you'd like to put them on I mean you could put some on the other side as well if you want to so again I'm going to leave that up to you I'm going to let you carry on uh, and do your own thing with that I hope you've managed okay with it and I hope you've enjoyed making it and more importantly that I hope you're pleased with the dream catcher now that it's finished really well done because there were some tricky bits in there um, and as i said before if you have any problems the email address will be at the end of the video you can just get in touch if you need to okay um, so that's it for now well there we are that completes our activity session we really hope you you're pleased with what you've made today Thank you for joining in and hopefully you'll be back with us again at Easter. If you'd like to send some pictures to Mr Coles, it would be really great to see what you've done. Stay safe and we'll see you soon.